This guide contains everything you need to know to succeed as the US historically, be it Navy, Air Force or Army. The first move you'll do is build max level infrastructure in all states that have resources in them. I also built level 5 infrastructure in North Carolina, since that's where your first donation is coming from. Research is very simple, we're just going to get production, construction and engineering. And with our final research slot we are picking mountaineers, so that we can unlock ranges later in the game, since those are an absolute S tier support company. Next thing we are going to get medium lobbying effort once, and then we are going to continue the new deal. We're going to shift left click every single one of those stupid air wings, and then we're going to dis- no, I misclicked. And then we're going to dismiss them. Afterwards, we use the quick deploy menu to deploy our tactical bombers, cars, and fighters. And then we indefinitely train the planes that we just deployed. For the Navy, same thing. We're going to shift left click every single one of those anchors and then control right click them into Norfolk. We're going to shift left click all unassigned divisions up here, right click them onto a general, right click these onto a field marshal, and then train them indefinitely. And then we're going to shift left click the 44th infantry division, disband the rest. As for the international market, it doesn't really matter too much. I'm still going to sell this stuff because it's just free money at this point. Because of that we are going to sell our entire stockpile and we're going to put the planes and convoys on high and the rest we can just keep on medium. As for the navy production, I'm going to cancel everything that's not about halfway finished. I wouldn't ever use this destroyer, but it's almost finished so... For a screen, that's that, that's fine for a screen. We're also going to put five dockyards and convoys and max out our repair queue. We're going to manage mill factories properly later. For now, I just check most of this on support equipment, so we get a little bit of production efficiency on this, rather than producing some crappy interwar equipment that we don't have any use for. The US also has a ton of good generals, so just sort by attack and assign some of them to your armies and army groups. Make alpha should obviously be reserved for your offensive army group, as to some of the other generals with Panzer Expert or High Attack in general. I do like to go for the production buffs for the MIOs and then later on get the stats. For your medium tanks you have the choice between Chrysler and Army Ordnance. Chrysler gives you more reliability and output whereas Army Ordnance gives you more breakthrough and production efficiency. I'm just gonna go with the Army Ordnance because additional breakthrough defense is very good. The aircraft designers are pretty self-explanatory. CAS for CAS, NAV for NAV, although if you're being honest you have a navy so unless you use your carriers you really won't have to invest into NAV. Then we also have Boeing. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then we can pick between Lockheed or the North American Aviation. Personally, I tend to go for the North American Aviation just because you get 25% air attack and then a bunch of speed and range and ah, oh, so much more range on your fighters. The Navy MIOs are similar to the airplane ones. Use the escort designer for screening ships, submarine for submarines, battle lines for capital ships and carrier for carriers. Also, if this was too fast, some very hot and funny and cool guy made a guide on Navy that you should definitely watch. Also, I, I don't know why they gave you minus 1% speed. It's neat. With that, after 14 minutes, we can finally unpause. Uh, Navy is stacked up, we're just gonna drag over them and press G. This stacks them up and then and we are going to create a new task force and press the submarines and boom. For the submarines I do like Stark because of the blockade runner and the spotter. Meanwhile the strike force gets assigned to Nimitz. Because of the naval lineage, spotter, superior tactician, very much like that guy. I mean his traits, I don't know about his politics. And I think he's already dead. And as with the army and the air force, we're going to indefinitely train these guys. We aren't gonna run out of fuel anyway, and we don't lose a single thing that is important to our game plan. So might as well get the free XP. And then we are going to go with another small lobbying effort, as well as hiring the um financial expert and then we're going to go with WPA. I'm also immediately going to get the naval reform and installed aggression. Our next research will be dispersed industry. Usually I'm all for concentrated but the US is one of the few nations that benefits from dispersed industry right now. I will make a more in-depth video for the industry text with a simple answer but also a deep dive and link it in the description. So if you're interested feel free to subscribe. We're going to get Taft and another small lobbying effort and then we're going to work on the Great Depression by getting the Agricultural Adjustment Act. With our Navy XP we can start to design some ships. I recommend getting a few spotting cruisers out, which will require the 1936 cruiser hull strapped with catapults. After we're done with that we can assign the design to the Norfolk MIO and enable auto upgrades so we get this design for free once we get the 1940 hull. Additionally we can also mark this design as a spyglass so we can manage the Navy easier later in the game. I also want some torpedo destroyers, which means we're going to use the 1936 destroyer hull. And then we're going to use the torpedo launchers, auto upgrade on this one, Norfolk, 
Cloak. As for the research, we are going to get radios next and one of the infantry attacks, but without MIOs, until we have a full cabinet, we need the PP very much. We're also going to switch away from the Bureau of Ordnance into Efficient Communications, because I do like torpedo hit chance, and I don't like not having torpedo hit chance. We are also going to go with the War Department, and I guess I'm gonna click it. Small lobbying effort already. Mm, I sure like politics in my World War II game. Next is Neutrality Act, and then we're going to lobby once more. It is election time, which means you could go for Alf Landon, or you get 20% infrastructure speed and you are not picking Alf Landon. And I mean, look at this guy, like, <laughs> I would do anything for this man. At this point, I am fine with eating a little bit of ahead of time stuff, dispersed construction, improved machine tools. Once we get the senator from North Carolina, we are immediately starting the construction of the mill factory and bumping it up. Now things are a little bit dicey. We have to get Ironhower, we have to get improved worker conditions and refuge to German scientists. Nom nom nom, research speed, yes. Our next focus will be the Selective Training Act to get some more manpower, which we will uh, not need. But it's good. And then we can also get the professional officer call. Okay, a shipbuilding industry we could invest in. I don't really care about it, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I'm gonna do it once. Oh, New York also okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm being European again. We're going to wait until the Fair Labor Standards Act unlocks. Might as well do a small lobbying effort once more. There we go. We can go Fair Labor Standards Act. I believe we lost a few days, but sure. I guess the Germans are gonna win World War II now. I'm gonna get the 1946 heavy ship hull. This is everything I'm going to build roads in. The rest doesn't have too many building slots that you can make use of, so I don't think it's gonna be too worth it. We're also going to get the smoke generators now, and I'm gonna get range improvements once, as well as interwar artillery. And don't forget to dump your Navy XP. We're gonna do another small lobbying effort. Arsenal of Democracy. Mm, might as well get the active sonar. Once all our roads have been constructed, we are going to build around 13 more sieve factories. Just spread these out in 100% infrastructure provinces so you don't waste the IC. Yeah, sure, let's also get better torpedoes, as well as fire control. With that, we can at least make use of our Navy XP. Because if you are using Navy, fire control, damage control are super important, as well as the smoke generators. The next focus will be the air war plants division. I also designed another battleship, which isn't that great, but that's just early ship designs for you. At around the beginning of October 1937, we also start improving relations with China. Once our focus completes, we are going to bank some PP until we can send an attaché to China. Okay, we can send the attaché to China, which gives us 35% war support, which means we can do giant wakes. I'm also gonna get the, the symmetric radar, simply because we can strap that one on all of our boats then. And I definitely didn't forget to put radar on all of my ships, I just didn't put it into the video. Once the giant wakes finishes, we will wait a little bit until we can do the Federal Housing Act. And in the meantime, you can go up to partial mobilization. Now that we have giant wakes, we are also just going to industrialize as much as we can. Just build everywhere, honestly. Don't forget to do the Federal Housing Act. We shouldn't need command power anymore. So aggressive assaulter for MacArthur, fortress buster for Truscott, bolt attack, and you shouldn't get it, but I'm gonna smoke, get smoke and fire now because otherwise I'll forget about it. Japan is saying we are a meanie, but um, Japan is the one that started the war. So our attaches will be sent where they please, where we please. And then we are going to go with the air support as well as yeah, amending the budget and getting some Italian scientists as well. And now comes the most annoying part of this playthrough. Managing 300 military factories without any research. I honestly just put 10 on AA, RT support equipment and 15 to 20 on guns and then just spread them out if I get more than that. Uh, I'm not gonna monitor this too closely, but I will mention it for tanks, trucks and planes later. So just use this time to get your infantry supplied, I guess. And let's get the 1938 medium tank. The next focus will be the escort fighters. As for production, what would make sense? I guess we can get a few more trucks. And with a few more trucks, I mean, we can get trucks. Ah, we have way too much industry. There we go. Just Chuck it in there. We are getting the uh, improved medium airframe, which does sadly take pretty much an entire year. Uh, we can also get centralized control and aircrew service. Another thing I use my research on now is getting some of the gun upgrades. They are very cheap, only costing 30 days, and they will make our navy even stronger. What the fuck? Japan already asked me, why do I care about Manguko? You don't even exist in real life. 25 pp. I'm actually going to build some suppression light tanks. They are not at all important. I just didn't want to look at my industry. Scientist Haven. 
is the next focus and then after that one we're going to get uh, the scientific research and development office. Fuck, I forgot about the war industrialist. I'm gonna get excavation 2 here. Okay, we have the basic medium chassis. I am just going to get the improved engines as well. I also used all the excavation decisions to create aluminum while getting one rubber from Malaya and one chromium from the UK. And then we're gonna get engineers 2 and then we can get the dispersed and all that. For the next focuses we are going to pick military construction and then we're going to go into wartime industries and make sure to spend your navy xp bro i don't want that many mill factories there we go i'm just gonna build artillery i guess and then i'm going to hire the air reformer as well as general motors now that we have the wartime industry time to get even more naval dockyards now that we have the engineer tech we can also create the cheap flame tank with those blades and start working on the improved medium tank chassis you suck a project and then we can also get bradley for some very very cheap superior firepower doctrines and then i'm gonna get survivability studies once world war ii has kicked off which means we can now build as big of a navy and as strong of ships as we want them to be. I thought about getting the naval reform, but it doesn't really matter for us. I guess we can still get him now. The next few focuses will be us going down to the wear group. I believe it is time we take a look at getting a proper army setup though. Usually I would bother with some defensive divisions, but honestly, since we are gonna get into the war so late anyway, I think I'm fine with just building offensive divisions throughout. There we go. Uh, 25 width infantry division, medium flame tanks, support AA, and then we're just gonna pump out as many of those infantries as we can. I also picked up field hospitals here simply to try them out, since I thought they're really good after the support company rework. <laughs> But the war was over so quickly that it didn't make any impact on this game. I will definitely try them out again and mention it in the next guide I make. We're also going to get the advanced medium airframe with our 300% research boost. Okay, uh, then we also are gonna get the heavy MGs, the last one that we need for our proper airframes. And then uh, let us take a look at the medium tank. There we go. We're gonna use the Sherman like that for now. And then later on we can uh, get more speed on this thing. Oh god. That cripples the rest of our economy. As you can see, we are already running out of building slots. So I am fine with helping out the Soviet Union a little bit here. I'm gonna get logistics next. We are also going to just deploy those guys as soon as possible. Just shift left click them to train them. We're gonna get Louisiana maneuvers now and then the airborne divisions. And we could also do something with Mexico, but I'm just gonna embargo them. At this point, I also remembered that I should have replaced Taft with the Economist after doing the wear group focus. So I guess we lost like five factories because of that. And there we go, mainland US has run out of building slots. I guess we're gonna build in the Philippines. Oh right, I can still build in Hawaii. Very important. We can do a mental budget again, as well as granting statehoods everywhere and a bit more steel development. Keep on deploying those divisions. What the fuck? No! You already asked me! At this point you should probably stop exercising your navy so that the boats are repaired for World War II. I also moved the guy with our submarines over to the Philippines and put him on Conway rating and pressed D until our submarines are split up into stacks of 8. Alright, at this point we can also start pumping out some of those armored divisions. We're also going to put a point into our mountaineer doctrine to unlock rangers. There we go. Add rangers on these. I think I'm just gonna get rid of support RT here. Yeah, let's try it. That's gonna be our offensive infantry division. That is the armored division. And then, there we go. That's the uh, marines. Additionally, we also create a proper heavy fighter design. But we're just gonna start pumping out a couple of those. At this point, you should also change your economy law to limited exports, so you don't have to import 200 lumen. All of the boats that we produced thus far should also be merged into our big dev stack by selecting the trident and right-clicking them onto the dev stack. And of course, pressing G to merge them. That's the extremely expensive flame tank that you should only use for offensive divisions. I'm just gonna try it here. For the infantry, I'm going to unassign the medium flame tank 2 because that one is very expensive okay then let's also get some of those proper marines out 24 to be precise and then let's get the tanks sure let's let's get some marines hey Merlin. <laughs> it's always so dorky how we just what was that for just walking across the table stretching and then okay now that japan declared warner's iceland demands protection there we go we annex i i mean we puppet iceland crappy submarines are immediately doing that job but i am just gonna say they are probably gonna die 
but that's not gonna be my problem. I'm gonna get the strike force over here now. If you are diligent with deploying your divisions, you should have one field marshal of the basic infantry and three stacks of marines as well as two stacks of tanks underway. Oh fuck, I also forgot about the cars. I'm focusing too much on being a guide and too little on doing my thing. Let's do this. Submarine. We are just gonna strap torpedoes on this thing as many as we can, as best engine as we can. There we go. Usually I wouldn't worry about the radars, but we don't have snorkels yet, so we might as well get radars here on the submarine hull. And then just for Japan, I'm gonna put like three dockyards on the submarines. Let's go for a fourth one. Submarines are just addicting. Okay, I'm gonna deploy all of those heavy fighters. I'm gonna shift left click them to train them. At this point, it's also worth it to switch to naval refit yards. If you want to D-Day already, you can also prepare naval invasion with your trained marine stack. The rest, I'm just gonna do area defense in the UK. And then we're gonna make quick work of Germany. Oh, we are winning a lot of battles here. Japan, what are you doing? I... Uh, opened the task force editor here and then just bump this once so we have 10 submarines and then i'm gonna apply this to fuck i didn't save the template i just never learn man there we go and now we're just gonna apply this template to all of these so that they fill up navy is fun <laughs> look at what's left <laughs> don't tell me the submarines aren't gonna do anything anymore because japan is out of convoys and they're out of fuel so any convoys that they have will go out without any protection and then immediately get intercepted I'm just gonna get all of the crappy planes over to the UK and then we can deploy our CAS here and then we won't have to worry about crappy planes destroying our range here. Invasion has started. We're gonna get the CAS over here just to CAS and then we will land in a second. Okay, Marines have landed. We're just gonna spread out very quickly with all of these guys and then let us delete this order. I'm going to press the front line button and shift left click that way we have a combined front line and then we're just gonna draw an arrow just get everyone over here please oh uh, let's also stop exercising that's probably a pretty good idea while you're attacking and the main main goal as i said uh, right now is just spread out as much as you can to secure supply because we have a bunch of divisions here i'm just gonna let this auto for a while that's france freed and you know what please just Drive to Leuwarden. Oh, never mind. There is a real German that's blocking us over the over the strait. We're just gonna push a little bit into Germany because we can afford all of this right now and we can just take some German industry. There we go. I've actually done an encirclement here, so you can't just say that I completely altered this. There we go. That, that, that encirclement will win the war. We have red now on the front, so I'm gonna stop the front here. But with these guys, I'm just gonna clean up here. There we go. Wait until everyone is here. And then get them the planning bonus here. In the meantime... Oh god, we're suffering from attrition down here. In the meantime, I'm just gonna start this offensive. And I'm gonna tell our defensive guys... The non-specialized, the basic infantry. I'm just gonna tell these guys to area defense here. If you need to, you can also press the force attack button. Like, with that, you pretty much always win. But we did not need it this game. And then I'm just gonna draw arrow here. Tell these guys to go. I'm gonna go a little bit myself. Oh, what? We didn't lose the front here? Oh, that is a big surprise to me. Uh, that's pretty much Japan. No fighters, no cars. You just need to land once. All right, let's take a quick look at Europe. I think we can just try another push here. Don't have any cars up. Oh, well, we, we have a little bit of cars up right now. And our fighters. Yeah, the cars is actually doing quite a bit. Considering we don't have that much cars, that's a bit surprising. There we go. We can now free Denmark as well, which is obviously very important. What will fall first, Tokyo or Berlin? We're knocking at both at the same time, but Berlin... Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I was about to say, because we were fighting here already, but Tokyo has fallen and there we go Berlin has fallen as well let's just finish Japan off don't even have to look at the rest of this we can focus on Europe and by focus I mean we can just never mind we can just watch it Hirohito will survive even though um well I feel like I should have been allowed to annex him but that's a different thing entirely there we go Germany has capitulated to the Dutch sure I don't mind. You know what? I'm just gonna delete the front and shift left click this. And then we're gonna draw another arrow here. Let's knock down Italy as well. Surely you control Veneto now. Okay. We're gonna get Veneto from France and Alto Albige. With that, we can push without worry into Italy and we're gonna get all of Italy. There we go. Italy is cut off and that 
usually means Italy has fallen. Hungary is out, Mussolini is the post, Italian civil war, fall of Rome. We did get the Italian puppet, but not that much of Italy, sadly. That <laughs> was... Oh my god, it was way too quick. This was so quick and easy. Look at our stockpiles. We still have everything. And if you don't want to end up like this guy, you should watch this video where I play as the Soviet Union and show you how to get 500 factories by the time Barbarossa starts.